Hey, it's Buffer Truth. So I want to um, study something. You know, I was thinking about, um, I had um, a brother in Christ ask me about a question. And then I ended up studying uh, studying it out. And it just like, you know, I started to, to see other things in the Bible that I thought were just really awesome. So um, I'm going to go through it. So it's Ecclesiastes 9. You know, when we talked about that woman. Remember the woman um, whom Jesus spoke to? And she was desiring to Jesus to give her um, a blessing, basically. And then he was talking about it, the, it was for the children. You sit at the table with the Lord. And she was saying, in essence, she said, but even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I mean, like, whoa, really humble, right? It's awesome. And, uh, you know, of course, Jesus blessed her. So I'm like, a lot of people, like, I'm like, wow, people are like, well, what's that about, you know? And so what this study is about is sort of talking about that and what it means. And I'm going to start here in Ecclesiastes 9. For all this, I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works, right? The righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. Notice it says in the hand of God. That'd be one hand, guys. Okay? No man knoweth either love or hate but all that is before them. Okay? All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. To the good and to the clean. And to the unclean, to him that sacrifices, and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner, he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Okay? This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, right? Yea, also the heart of the sons of man is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live and after that they go to the what dead so it's talking about this event and you're like what is this event well it says all men are as grass and all the glory of men as a flower grass that withereth and falleth and falleth away basically saying all men are going to die according to the flesh okay so let's go back and let's read it one more time i like to read things you know over for all this I considered in my heart even to declare this that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God it's basically saying look the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God right he's talking about those who believe those who are sheep because we what declared righteous and the sheep are on his what right hand in the hand of God right it says right my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and none shall snatch them from my what? Hand, the works of God. That's why the Bible says, God is not worshiped in temple made with hands, neither is he worshiped by men's hands, okay? So it's God that worketh in you fulfill his good will and pleasure. So those who are born again, they're new creatures in Christ created by God. Those creatures are in the right hand of God okay no man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them all things come alike to all there is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean and to the unclean right right because it's talked about us so you've been washed We've been regenerated, renewed by the Holy Ghost, right? And it talks about a wicked, talk about the righteous, talk about how we're declared righteous. There is one event to the righteous, right? It says, um, to he that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So these are people who believe. Then there's a wicked and adulterous generation. Those are those who aren't born again, who aren't regenerated by and renewed by the Holy Ghost. Those who don't believe the gospel. So those that's a wicked and adulterous generation. 
and to the good, right? The good and the, to the clean. Again, it's just being washed. And it's talking about you've been, what, perfected in Christ. So that means you're born again, sealed in God, right? Without spot or blemish, right? Presented as a chaste virgin. And to the unclean. Those are those who don't believe. They refuse to believe. So they're not born again. They're not baptized by the Holy Ghost. And to him that sacrifices, right? Those, those of us who believe, what we, we are offered up a spiritual sacrifice. It talks about in the Bible a better sacrifice, which is by the Spirit. See, God's not accepting death because God's a God of the living and not the dead. And to him that sacrifices not. Well, they don't sacrifice to God. They sacrifice unto what? Unto idols, right? And once they don't believe, they what they do? They sacrifice their children to Baal. Because they're children, they offer the children to the fire. When you don't believe the gospel, and you're not preaching the gospel, he that doesn't gather with me, scatters abroad, you're offering your children to to, to demons, to, de to devils, right? As is the good, so is the sinner. As he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath, right? The fearful and unbelieving, right? They won't enter the kingdom of God. But he's saying this is an evil among all things that are done, what? Under the sun. Notice, under the sun. So those who believe, we're born again. So though we have our flesh, the old man, that man is the one who can who still dies. Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. So the spirit man never dies. That's why he says, I give unto my sheep eternal life and they shall what? Never perish. That tells you he's not talking about the flesh. There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun that there is one event unto all. What's that event? Well, if you, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil and the madness is in their heart while they live. He's talking about people who have carnal life. Right? But you got to believe today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, lo, I stand at the door knock. And after that, they, and after that, they go to the dead. Right? And after that, they go to the dead. Right? But again, God is a God of living and not the dead. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this, said Jesus. But listen. Is telling you, again, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. People go out, preach the word in what? Season and out of season. People are giving you the gospel saying, look, Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. He says he's not willing that any should perish. He's patient, right? The Lord is patient. So he's telling you, believe, believe, believe. But he says, for to him that is joined to all the living, this is people who have carnal life. He's saying, look, there is hope. Who is our hope? Christ is our hope and glory. So that's our hope. We, her hope is just faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not what seen. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. But if you don't believe, as the Pharisees said, as, well, as it was told to the Pharisees, if you don't believe, you'll die in your sins. John 69, of sin because you believe not on me. See, the man Christ Jesus purged the law with his blood. He paid the legal sin debt. He paid it, all of it. The legal sin debt's all paid for. But he did that for all men. We just judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. So meaning, you do not have spiritually, you do not have eternal life. You have carnal, temporal life. And so now that you have this carnal, temporal life, you need to believe. Do not die in unbelief. So he says, there's, there's hope for you. Someone gives you that gospel. You can believe it. And once you believe it, you pass from death to what? Life. You're a new creature, sanctified and sealed in Christ. You're saved. It's a done deal. But you got to believe. So for to him that is joined to all the living, there is what? Hope. There is hope. And listen to this part. This is getting back to the dog thing. For a living dog, a living dog, a living dog, because we're all as beasts before the Lord. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Because when you don't believe, you are what? You're of the devil. See, the devil goes around as a roaring lion seeking he whom he may devour. And it was told of us, he says, don't, why do you devour one another? Sin, when it fulfills itself, bring forth death. When you look at it from the legal standpoint, it says if you offend one part of the law, you offend all parts of the law. 
But then guess what? Christ died in our place. So no one goes to hell because of the law, but yet all men still what? Die, temporal death. And he's saying, look, that's the temporal death. That's the flesh. That's everyone's gonna die according to the flesh. Fear not him that can destroy the body, but him who can cast both body and soul into hell. Hence, when you go to the thief on the cross, today, Jesus told the thief on his right hand, thou will be with me in paradise. But you got to have that hope. So for a living dog, it's better than a dead lion. But she, to be a living dog, you understand. See, there's the, there's the devil who goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's feeding himself. He's feeding himself. Right. He doesn't have bread in him. So he's going around and devouring the flesh of men. You can see that in Revelation. Right. And that dog is hungry, too, but that dog needs to be fed, too. But if you can see yourself as either if you see yourself as a dog, if you see yourself as an abomination, if you see yourself as a sinner, then you've humbled yourself. But if you die. In unbelief then you die in unbelief. So for a living dog is better than a dead lion because at least while you're alive, you can say today, lo, I stand at the door and knock, okay? So I'm gonna go Let's go to this. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him. She's crying unto Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a what? Devil. That's exactly what I was just talking about. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus did not change that statement ever. Ever. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. If you don't have eternal life, you're not a sheep. Guys, this is not difficult. A lot of people just don't believe. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Okay. So when you worship, that's saying, I believe I have faith. Help me. So she believes because the fact that she says, help me is saying she's showing that she has faith. Okay. But he answered and said, listen, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Isn't that a strange thing to say? She's saying, it says, then she came to worship him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. What a, what a transition. She's like, well, I am actually came here and I was asking about Originally, he's saying, look, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grieved, grievously vexed with the devil, my daughter. But he answered her not a word. Whoa. 
And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Okay, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread. Who's the bread of life? And cast it to dogs. Cast it to dogs. So it's better to be a living dog than a dead lion, right? Because there's hope for a living dog. But see, do you see yourself as a dog? And she said, truth, Lord. Yet, look, is she a child until you believe? Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, it is not meat to take to take the children's bread. He says, I come but for the what? Lost sheep. The sheep are equating to what? Look, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's telling you that those who are considered the lost sheep of the house of Israel are what? Who are they? Those are the children who have already the what? The bread of life. Those who receive the bread of life. Those who are those are all those who are the children of God. And he's saying to this woman, he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. He that eateth of the bread that I give shall never hunger. He that drinketh of the water that I give shall never thirst. He that liveth and believeth on me, better to be a living dog than a dead lion. He that liveth and believeth on me shall what? Never die. And she said what? Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table, right? The children of God have the bread of life. And just like those baskets of fish and bread, the grace doesn't run out. The grace is there as long as you're a living dog and you haven't blasphemed. Meaning you understand and you just refuse. See, some, some refuse, but she's not refusing. Some refuse to eat of the bread of life. Some refuse to drink of the living water. They don't believe. But his grace is sufficient. God is patient, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And he's saying, look, yet she's saying, she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Right? He's the bread. He gives that bread to his children and he's saying, look, the crumbs that fall from the master's table, those go to the dogs. And once you eat of that bread, guess what? You go from being a dog to what? Sitting at the master's table. And then you're to go and be a what? Give those crumbs to other people who see themselves as what? Humbly as dogs too. As beast. As beast. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, listen, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wit, wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Okay? And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now you're like, Bob, for truth, you're stretching this whole dog thing. No, I'm actually not. Let me show you another thing, because we are as beast. See, the reason I'm teaching this is because there's many people who are telling you about in Revelation. They're like, well, you know, there's this great beast and who's this beast and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm not the beast and I was never a beast and. Blah, 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 blah. I was never an abomination to the Lord. I was never desolate. Now, why did Jesus say to the Pharisees who didn't believe? He says, our house is left desolate. He's like, oh, your house wasn't desolate before. 
He says, thou house is left desolate unto thee. So listen to this. I'm going to show you a couple of verses. Exodus 23, 29. I would not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. Look, by a little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Okay? So men are being brought forth from the dust of the earth, this earth. And it said, cursed is the ground for thy sake. That was what was told to Adam. He says that all flesh and all earth had corrupted itself before the Lord. So it's saying all this earth is, is corrupt. And so men who are desolate, he's saying, look, these men are desolate. They need to be that spirit, that evil, that unclean spirit needs to be what? Driven out of them, right? Driven out. They need to actually die to the flesh, meaning die to this world, meaning die to self. The way that they can do that, the way that we have to do that is simply by believing. Because once you believe, you're born again, not of this world, not of this land, not of the corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible word of God. And since corruption doesn't inherit incorruption, he's saying you're a new creature created in heaven. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. But see, as we are saved, now that we have the bread of life, we can go out and we say, now we're going to drive out other beasts. See, that spirit's going to be driven out one way or another. You can die to self, meaning believe the gospel, and then that evil spirit is driven out. And then it says, it's God that worketh in you to fulfill his good will and pleasure. So now you have the bread and the water and you go and offer it because you also have the word, which is a seed. You go and offer it one planet, one water, God give it the increase to other folks, right? And so once you have that, now you go out and you're going to drive out what, quote unquote, other people who have uh, other, you're going to save others, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You're going to go and you're going to offer them the bread. You're going to offer them the bread and the water. Right? That's what we're doing. Because we sit at the master's table. Right? We no longer eat. We never eat at the table of, of devils. So we're sitting at the master's table and we have the bread and water. And we're doing what? We're offering. We're offering food to the widows and to the orphans. To the dogs. Right? And so he's saying, look, I will drive them out before thee until they be increased and inherit till it was time until thou be increased and inherit the land. So then once we offer that to someone else then the person believes that's an increase, be fruitful and what multiply, we get an increase. Right. That's an increase. Right. He comes to give life and life more abundant, bountiful, increase, be fruitful and multiply, increase. And we do that every day of every month of every year. There's the body of Christ, people all over the, the world who are children of the light, who are children who have bread and water. They're offering, they're offering people the kingdom. They're offering them bread of life. They're offering them the living water. And that's increasing throughout the year. 12 times 12. That tree bears 12 manner of fruits each month. 12 times 12. 144. Enter my rest. One day with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand. Because they have to do it. They have to enter his rest. So we who are in his rest, we have the Sabbath in us. And we're telling other people to believe so they can enter the Sabbath. And since we stay in the Sabbath, that one day just... It's like it keeps going on. It's still one day. It's that you have to spiritually enter the Sabbath. But we're in his rest, but we're in his rest, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, carnally speaking, we're in his spiritual rest. And that day is like a thousand years. So 12 times 12 is 144,000. Tree of life, revelation, 12 men are fruits. Each month beareth fruit. 
12 times 12 is 144,000. And so we inherit the land because we're inheriting those who are born from above. Jerusalem are free. That's the good land. It's mother of us all. He's not planting his seed in corrupt earth. Right? The incorruptible word of God is not planted in the earth. Corruption can't inherit incorruption. Okay? So that's one example. Now we go back just to prove the point that every one of us was a beast. I'm doing this because, look, there's a lot of people teaching, quote, eschatology, and it's, it's not right. And it says, look, so foolish was I. This is Psalm 73, 22. I'm just going to show you that we go from being a beast to a child, from being a dog to being a beast, to being like a serpent. We go from being a Gentile, which is led about with dumb idols, to a child of God. And then we can sit at the table and we have the bread. And because we have the bread, then we're offering the bread daily. And so we're like, look, we're bringing forth fruit daily. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Go ye out in all nations. Right. Preaching the gospel, preach the word in season and out of season. So foolish, it says here, was I and ignorant. Since there's a time when you don't know the truth. There's a time when we don't know the way. We only have perverse ways from our fathers. We only have crooked ways from our fathers because the gospel comes from God. Life comes from God. There's a time when we don't know the way. There's a time when we don't know the truth. There's a time when we don't have life. Hence, we thus judge if one died for all, then we're all dead. So we're saying, look, so foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Was. Notice, I was. I was a dog. I was a Gentile. I was a generation of vipers. I was a serpent. I was a worm. I was uh, going around as a roaring lion, seeking roaring, roaring lion, seeking whom I may devour. I was feeding myself. My God was my belly. Nevertheless, because I was, but see, I believed it. See, I'm no longer ignorant. I. Jesus came, the light, the truth, the way, the truth. I was ignorant to the truth at one time, but then that gospel, that good tidings, that good news, someone came to me while I sat in darkness with my desolate house and my unclean house with my filthy rags on. And they said, look, I'm offering you living water. Look, I'm here to tell you about the kingdom of God. I'm here to tell you about the only wise savior. I'm here to tell you about my father in heaven. I'm here offering you the gospel of peace, the gospel of liberty. I'm here to set free the captive. And I saw myself for who I was. I was a beast before thee. Then I believe the gospel. I believed on the way, the truth, the life, and I received eternal life freely given to me because I understood that I couldn't keep the law. And I believe that Christ died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. I believe that he purged the law with his blood. And I knew there was one thing left that I was guilty of not believing. And now that I had the knowledge of the truth, I had to believe it. And I believed it. And then I was what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. So now, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. It's God that worketh in me to fulfill his good will and pleasure. I'm of the body of Christ. Thou hast holden me by my what? Right hand. I'm a sheep. I've been declared righteous. I have a wonderful counselor, an everlasting father, an almighty God. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel as I'm here now as a stranger, sojourning in a strange land, as a child of the light. And I have to let my light shine before men so that they may do what? Glorify my father 
which is in heaven. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. Right? Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Okay? For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Right? He's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. How I long to gather you under my wings as a hen gathereth her chicks, but you would not, you stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee, but it is good for me to draw near to, to God. I have put my trust, put no confidence in men. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all thy works to he that worketh not but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly his face is counted for righteousness I've been declared righteous because I have believed on the true and living God Jesus Jesus see the Bible talks about us believing We have to enter his rest. In Luke 14, 5, it says, an answer saying, because it's talking about the Pharisees who were hypocrites, right? And so these Pharisees were talking about um, looking at the law, but using the law unlawfully. See, the law is a schoolmaster, but they were using the law to put heavy burdens on people, right? And it said, look, no, the law is for the lawless. You're putting heavy burdens and yokes upon people. And Jesus says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, all weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it says, those who believe have entered their rest, his rest. And they've rested from the works, even as the Lord did from his on the Sabbath day. And then Jesus answered and spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go. And here's their hypocrisy. Because, see, they don't value the things of God. Mercy. Right? And answer them saying, which of you, see, he's talking about for their property, right? For their worldly goods, right? Which is all vanity. He says, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit? See, in this, in this teaching... They're actually the ass and the ox. They just don't know it. Falling into a pit and will not straightway, meaning if you had compassion, will not straightway pull him out on the what? Sabbath day. Notice, fall into a pit. Pull him straight out on the Sabbath day, meaning when you enter his rest, that's when you have life. And they cannot answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms. Right? They sit in the chief seats, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room. See? Because what do they do? They sit in the chief rooms. They exalt themselves. They elevate themselves above men. They sit on the shoulders of men. They put heavy burdens on men. They say, thank God I'm not like other men. They say that they keep the law, but of course they're not keeping the law. They're hypocrites. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest, in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. Right? Remember, he said, Thou dost dishonor me, and thou dost dishonor my father. 
right? Remember the Pharisees said he cast out devils by the work of the devil. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place, meaning you sat in the highest room and now and before everybody, you're going to be ejected from that room because you put yourself in place of the honorable man. Give this man place and thou begin with shame to take the what? Lowest room. See, they didn't think, they're thinking they're pulling people out of the pit. They don't understand. They're the ass and the ox that are in the pit. And they don't believe, thusly, they're not pulled out. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. You need to see yourself for who you are. You're a dog under that table. You thinking you're sitting at the table, you're a dog under the table. Humble yourself. Go, see how the Lord writes his word, amazing. Go and sit down in the lowest room. That when he that bade thee come, the spirit and the bride say, come, whosoever, let him come and take the water of life freely. He may say unto thee, what, friend? Go up higher, then shalt thou have worship, right? God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth in the presence of them that sit at meet with thee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Almighty. Because if we go back Praise the Lord. But Jesus said unto her, remember he talks about meat. Let the children first be filled, for it is not what? Meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. Right? And when she had come to her house, she found the devil gone and her daughter laid upon the bed. Man. So we go back to this table where it says, and he that bade thee and come and say to thee, give this man place and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. He that exalted himself will be what? He that humbled himself will be what? But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. Then when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher. Seated in heavenly places, he hath made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then shalt thou have worship. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Then you can sit at the master's table. After you saw yourself for what you are, a dog, a beggar, poor, desolate, naked, blind, a sinner, right? Shout. Thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For, who, um, for whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again and recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the who? Call the poor, right? Call the poor. Call the poor. <laughs> call the poor. 
call the poor, right? He's a chief. It says he'll he'll make you all his riches and glory. Store not for yourselves treasures in earth, on earth where thieves break in and moth do corrupt. But store for yourselves treasures in heaven, right? Call the poor, right? Do you see yourself as poor? Call the maim. Do you try to walk in your own righteousness? The lame, right? The lame. The blind. Do you, do you say I already have sight, Lord? I know you say you come give sight to the blind, but are you seeing yourself? Are you saying you can see clearly? Do you see yourself for who you are and God for who he is? And thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot recompense thee. This isn't from man. Man doesn't offer you eternal life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life, the light, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit in their life. For they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. I come to give life and life more abundantly. And when you believe you are resurrected because we're risen in Christ, Christ says, I am the resurrection. I am the truth. I am the life. He that believeth on me shall never die. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm in the kingdom of God. I eat that bread. I'm offering bread and water. We, the body of Christ, offer bread and water daily. Hourly. Then said he unto them, a certain man made a great supper and bade many come whosoever come and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Lo, I stand at the door and knock. As many as receive him gave you power to become the sons of God. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. I got to go bury my, my, my father. Let the dead bury the dead. They were marrying and giving in marriage. They were scoffers saying, when is the promise of his coming? For all things continue the same since our father's. Well, yeah, there's nothing new under the sun, but you got to be born again by the promise and born again in the heavenly. It's when you believe you're a new creature created in Christ, not of this world, not of this corrupt world, but of the world above. Jerusalem above is free is what mother of us all. So things here continue the same, but that's why those who are born again from above come into this old world of sin and darkness and offer what? Bread and water. So they began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. All the earth had corrupted itself before the Lord. And I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, beast buying beast, buying and selling men. Right. And I go to prove them where well, they're going to die. They're going to die just like you. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have they were marrying and giving in marriage. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I can't come. Well, you need to you need to forsake your mother, your father, your sister, your brother and your children. You need to believe you need to be born again of incorruptible seed. You need to forsake lands. You need to be born again out of this world. And therefore, I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly, yo, I come quickly, into the streets and the lanes of the city. See, we're going into Babylon. We're going into Egypt to rescue those who are in bondage. 
so that they can be born again into the heavenly New Jerusalem. Doesn't matter what they're calling it here on earth, guys. They can give it any name they want. They can disguise it and make it, try to say it's a holy city, an eternal city, all they want. But we know it's not an eternal city because 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, the things which are seen are temporal and the things which are not seen are eternal. So we know they're lying when they call that place over there the holy city. And bring in hither the what? The poor the maimed, the halt, and the blind. Are you seeing a theme? Are you seeing how we need to see ourselves? You think you're rich in this world? Well, let me see, how, how is that going to work out for you? How did it work for the people over in Egypt? I think you need to go visit a graveyard. I think we need to go to the house of mourning. I need you. I see, I know they try to keep these people alive in your memory, but I think you need to go visit the graves of all the quote unquote great men. And then remember that Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. So if you have a person who, you know, believe the gospel, hey, don't go just visit that grave. You can do it if you want. But I tell you what, they're not there. He that liveth and believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall never die. And the servant said, Lord, it is done and thou hast commanded. And yet there is what room his grace is more than sufficient. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come that my house may be what filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. They're not going to eat of that bread. They're not going to drink of that water. They're not going to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. And there and there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, if any man come to me and hate not his father. And mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life. He's saying there's nothing in your seed. There's nothing in your family, quote unquote, roots. There's nothing. He says you're a tree without fruit, uh, the tree that withereth without fruit, plucked up from the roots. He says your root, he says your seed, your root, your seed and your offspring are corrupt. Hence, he says, I am the root and the offspring. He says, I'm the root, the seed, the offspring. And the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. And the words that I speak to you, they're a spirit and they're a life. And he says, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. You must be born again, Nicodemus. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. So, and his own life, see, that dog needs to die. But better to be a living dog, because at least you have, there's some hope under the sun. There's some hope for that dog. There's no hope for that dead lion. He says he cannot be my disciple. He says he can't follow me because if he don't believe, he can't follow me in the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. See, those who understood, they understood the gospel. They tasted it, but they thought, mm, I don't like it. They don't like it. They considered it foolish. See, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But to those of us who are saved, it's the power of God and salvation. The gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they counted it a foolish thing. And who of sir do not bear his cross? They need to die to self. And coming after me cannot be my disciple. See, my sheep hear my voice. I come but for the lost sheep of the household of Israel. But see, in Christ, he says, now when you believe, he says, now you are no more strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints of the commonwealth of Israel. 
Israel shall be saved, Isaiah 45, 17, in the Lord. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, a world without end. Well, this heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit it not down first and count the cost. Think about it. You're trying to build your legacy based on the shoulders of your great grandfather. But then you go to your great grandfather to the, according to the flesh. And where is it? Where is he at? Where's your great, great grandpappy? Name the greatest man of your history. And where is he at? It's in the grave. Pretty hard to stand on his shoulders, pretty hard to reach heaven, pretty hard to reach that tower in heaven when all the people whose shoulders you stand on are laying in the grave. See, Babylon has fallen. Count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Right? Right? God tells you the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He tells me that he said, you need to count the cost. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. You got to die. We don't have what it takes. Less happily after he had laid the foundation. See? <laughs> Upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? And is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him. The Lord's laughing at that. Vanity of vanities. It is all vanity. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. He got the U-Haul behind the hearse. And what king goeth to make war against another king, sit it not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Are you going to defeat death? You need to count the cost. Are you going to defeat death? Are you going to defeat death in the grave? Are you going to be able to go through that fire? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassage and desired conditions of peace. Right? See, I'm offering you true peace. I'm offering you the gospel of peace. It says, he whom the Son set free is free indeed. It's the gospel of liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. See, Agar had two sons, one of the bondwoman, one of the free. See, the children of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but the children of the free woman was born after the promises. It says, the children of the flesh or the children of the bondwoman shall not have an inheritance with children of the free woman born by promise. After you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So she will, shall not be heir with children of the promise. Hence, Jesus, unless you be born again, you cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaken not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. That's not talking about your false pastor asking you to sign over your quote unquote worldly goods. He's saying just believe the gospel and you're a new creature you're no longer even of this world jesus told the pharisees he says you are from beneath i am from above ye are of this world i am not of this world he says my kingdom is not of this world my kingdom come not with observation you got to see it by faith you got to inherit it by faith the kingdom of god is at hand Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill. <laughs> right? 
but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. Right? Do you hear it? Have you tasted that the Lord is good? Right? Are the words sweet to you? Are you preserved by the word? The word that endureth and abideth forever? Are you born again of incorruptible seed? Are you going to remain a dog? I'll give you a last Revelation 22. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's a lot of people teaching a lot of heresy. So it talks about, look, Blessed are they that do his commandments because once you believe, you're counted for righteousness. Right? You've been declared righteous. To he that worketh not but believeth on him that justifies in godly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. For without, without that city, are what? Dogs. And sorcerers. And whoremongers. And evil and adulterous generation. And murderers. What you've done to the least of these my brothers, you've done it to me. And idolaters. Ye were Gentiles, lit about with dumb idols. And whosoever loveth and maketh a what? Lie. Ye pervert the gospel. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. Give me just a second. I am the root and the offspring of David. See, he's not talking about the flesh. Remember, he said, forsake thy mother, thy father, thy sister, thy brother, thy houses, thy lands, and thyself. And the bright and morning star. And listen, here's the part. And the spirit, see that lamb who's married to New Jerusalem, whose mother of us all is the father of all his children. And the spirit and the bride say, come and listen. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. Let him that is a thirst, come. And so whosoever will, let him take the water of life Freely, freely, freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Don't add to the gospel. Don't take away from the gospel. Don't try to do works. And if any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy. See, we are born again. He says, my words will not return unto me void. So when you're in the word, you don't add or take away. So that just means you just believe the gospel, right? You're sanctified and sealed. Thy word is true. Sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. Well, you're sealed in the word. So you're no longer against him. You don't scatter lies. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book, he which testifies these things says, surely, listen, I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Lo, I stand at the door and knock. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As many as receive him gave you power to become the sons of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.